Thomas Seyfried, a well-known biology professor at Boston College, published a paper arguing that cancer doesn't start with genetic mutations, but with a failure in cellular energy metabolism. In other words, when cells lose their ability to efficiently use oxygen to produce energy, they switch to an ancient emergency mode, fermentation. All cancers, regardless of tissue origin or cell type, uh, was dysregulated in the cell growth predominantly from an insufficiency of the ability of the cells in that organ or wherever it was to generate energy using oxygen. There was a failure in the oxidative phosphorylation capacity of the, of the cell, leading secondarily and pro, in a protracted way to an increase in a fermentation metabolism. But in reality, few people realize that the root of the problem begins much earlier with damage to the mitochondria. These tiny organelles aren't just the cell's batteries. They're miniature reactors where oxygen and nutrients are converted into energy. When your mitochondria are damaged and stop working properly, the cells begin to suffocate. And that's what drives them into fermentation. So, if you can strengthen and restore your mitochondrial health, you automatically protect your body and can even prevent or stop cancer at its very beginning. Mitochondria are a tough organelle. The problem is we chronically abuse it without realizing what we need to do to keep it healthy. So even if you are exposed to chemical carcinogens, even if you are exposed to all these things, but you're keeping your body as healthy as you possibly can, you could possibly delay or even prevent the damage to the mitochondria, even though you have the, even though you are being exposed to this. So it's, a, it's actually in your hands. Um, you can actually reduce risk for cancer by knowing what keeps your mitochondria healthy. The first damage to mitochondria comes from oxidative stress, when free radicals build up inside them like tiny vandals. At first, they disrupt the organelle's inner processes, and then, once the mitochondrion becomes unstable, they break out and start causing mutations in the cell itself. All of this happens because of common external factors like poor sleep, chronic stress, and a sedentary lifestyle. Most people can't always control these things because of work or family demands. But it's exactly from these seemingly minor factors that a cancer cell begins to form. When you have this dysfunctional mitochondria, it produces reactive oxygen species, radicals, radicals. They damage DNA, RNA, and protein. So most of the genetic damage in that you see in the nucleus the mutations that everybody is focusing on, not everybody, but majority of the cancer people are focusing on those mutations. They're caused by the, the, abnormal, the abnormal radicals coming out of the damaged mitochondria because, the, because those radicals are carcinogenic and mutagenic. They cause the mutations that people are studying. You can reduce the effects of oxidative stress with antioxidants, which act like firefighters, putting out the damage caused by free radicals. One example is coenzyme Q10. It helps restore the respiratory chain inside mitochondria and protects their membranes from oxidation. It's especially beneficial for people over 40 at a dose of no more than 100 milligrams per day. Another important nutrient for mitochondrial health is vitamin C. It neutralizes superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, helping the mitochondria function smoothly. In addition to supplements, you can also use natural sources like green tea or turmeric. These foods are rich in plant compounds that activate protective genes and directly neutralize excess free radicals. The second key factor for healthy mitochondria is metabolic flexibility, the body's ability to switch between two main energy sources, glucose and fat. When this ability is lost, mitochondria start to struggle. They can no longer efficiently burn fat, they drown in excess glucose and, eventually, switch to fermentation simply because it's easier. According to Professor Seyfried, this loss of metabolic flexibility is one of the main triggers of cancer, and the best protection lies in maintaining it. He points to our ancestors and indigenous peoples, who rarely, if ever, developed cancer, as living proof of this principle. Our species, human beings, evolved in a food-restricted environment. Uh, we were always, for, for long tens of thousands of years in our origin, we were always in ketosis because we had very few carbohydrates in the, in the, in the environment. 
Uh, we were always in a semi-hungry, starved state. And the foods that we ate were very, very low in carbohydrates. You know, I, I we'd kill animals. Uh, we would eat different kinds of plants. Uh, but we wouldn't have high-carbohydrate foods. So the foods of our ancestors uh, were very low in carbohydrates, putting us in nutritional ketosis. And that's why cancer in Aboriginal folks that still are on the planet, cancer is almost unknown, unheard of in these Aboriginal tribes of people who live according to their traditional ways, which was no high carbohydrate foods, a lot of exercise, your mitochondria are maintained in a super energy state, and cancer does not exist. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Only very rarely. It's a very, it's almost like finding a needle in a haystack to find a tumor in an Aboriginal person who living according to natural ways. The state of ketosis is just one form of metabolic flexibility, and you don't need to go on a strict ketogenic diet to achieve it. Simply cutting out all carbohydrates for two or three days while increasing your fat intake is enough. Think of it as a short workout for your mitochondria. It trains them to adapt to different fuel sources. It's also important to remember that glucose and glutamine fermentation are the main energy sources for cancer cells. That's why Professor Seyfried insists that a full ketogenic diet is one of the most effective ways to deliberately deprive cancer cells of their fuel supply, effectively stopping their growth. The high-fat diet is designed to keep your mitochondria healthy. If your mitochondria remain healthy, you're not going to get cancer. Uh, it's just that simple. It's just as important to create what's called a fasting window, which also helps maintain metabolic flexibility. When the gap between your meals lasts about 14 to 16 hours, your body not only switches to burning fat for energy, but also begins a process called mitochondriogenesis. Simply put, damaged mitochondria inside your cells start to break down, and new, healthy ones are born in their place. You don't need to commit to strict fasting. Just have dinner earlier and breakfast later. That way, you can extend your fasting window naturally with the help of sleep without much effort. Beyond nutrition, your physical activity plays a crucial role in mitochondrial health. And most importantly, that activity should be aerobic. Aerobic exercise helps restore the mitochondrial respiratory chain and keeps their function stable. It also lowers glucose and glutamine levels in the body, once again, depriving cancer cells of their main energy sources. This doesn't have to mean exhausting daily workouts. Even a 30-minute walk after meals or a bike ride can be enough. You might also pick up a light sport or hobby that you can enjoy once a week. Professor Seyfried emphasizes that the key is consistency. Your activity should feel enjoyable, not stressful or draining. Exercise is absolutely essential for the therapeutic efficacy of this process because we found that exercise does two things. Number one, it lowers glutamine. That's great. Exercise itself will lower blood glutamine. Number two, when you're burning, uh, when you're exercising, your muscles are taking in uh, uh, glucose from the bloodstream and converting it into glycogen or burning it on the spot. So um, muscle and brain get most of the glucose in the body. The brain takes glucose but can switch to ketones, but will always take the glucose. Muscle, if you're exercising, the muscles are going to take in glucose. Who's the lowest guy on the totem pole to get the sacred glucose? It's a damn tumor cell. So he's, once your body is in nutritional ketosis and you are exercising, those tumor cells are going to be under a world of hurt. It's important to understand that healthy mitochondria don't just protect you from cancer. They also mean a life free from inflammation, fatigue, and chronic illness. But it's equally important to remember that any changes you make for your health should feel natural and comfortable for you. The key is simply to want those changes, because that desire alone can be the first step toward preventing or even healing cancer.